the animosity that the shaitan has for mankind goes back to the creation of Adam alayhi salam and actually even before that we know that before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created mankind the jinn were already in existence the jinn were created before mankind and when the jinn were created the existence and scholars say it was like a very long time before perhaps even thousands of years before the creation of mankind Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the jinn and amongst the jinn there was one particular jinn who was very very pious and his piety reached such a high level that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up to come live with the angels and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the angels and our belief as Muslims is that the shaitan that the devil that Satan that Iblis wasn't an angel and this comes from Christian theology our belief as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Kana min al -jinn. he was one of the jinn Iblis was from the jinn so Allah raised this one jinn Iblis the shaitan to come live with the angels and now for thousands upon thousands and thousands of years Iblis worships Allah and is considered amongst the most pious amongst all of the jinn and he remained like that for a very long time until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the body of Adam alayhi salam and we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took clay from different parts of the earth and created the body of Adam alayhi salam but initially life was not blown into the body of Adam alayhi salam so it's just the body and Iblis now he witnesses this he sees that Allah has created this new creation and actually even the angels they remarked they said أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَا they said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Surah Al-Baqarah they say they say will you place therein meaning upon earth a creation that will cause corruption and spill blood now according to most of the scholars of tafsir what they're talking about here is, are the jinn what they're saying here is that you create Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a creation similar to mankind the jinn meaning similar in the sense that they were given free will and what did they do the majority of them they caused corruption and they spilled blood by the way side note some scholars say that this ayah doesn't necessarily refer to the jinn right we know that there is very possible that there were creations other there's a, there are creations other than the creation of mankind right so for example the whole issue of dinosaurs it's always like a this, this controversial thing there's no con there's no controversy in islam we believe Adam alayhi salam was the first amongst the creation of mankind. But does that mean there weren't any creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon earth before that? No, it doesn't mean that. Right? And some scholars, and this is some of the modern day scholars, they hold this opinion as well, that it is possible that when the angels said that will you create or will you place a creation therein that will cause corruption and spill blood, it's not necessary that they're referring to the jinn. It's possible that they could be referring to a creation which is, and I'm about to blow your mind right now. Okay, it's possible that they're a creation which was similar to mankind, but was not mankind. So perhaps they looked like they were similar in their appearance to mankind, but they weren't mankind. So for us as Muslims, it is possible that before Adam alayhi salam was created, there was a creation that was similar to mankind, even in their form, but they weren't mankind. Yes, Adam alayhi salam, without a doubt, I want to clarify this, don't misquote me on this. Yes, without a doubt, Adam alayhi salam is the first creation amongst mankind, but it is possible that there was a creation similar to mankind before that creation. Allahu ta'ala a'lam, right? Anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates Adam alayhi salam. And now Iblis looks upon Adam and he's starting to wonder now why? Why would Allah create this other creation? For thousands of years, Iblis looks at himself as the best. How? In his mind, he's, he thinks to himself, there are two main creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are the angels and there's the jinn. He thinks to himself, as for the angels, there's no comparison between me and them because they don't have free will. So whatever goodness they do, that's how Allah created them. So there's no comparison between me and, and the angels. Then there's me and the jinn. And amongst the jinn, I'm the best. In other words, I'm the best of the best. 
right? There's no other creation in Allah has not created another creation that is as good as me. Now imagine living upon that for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years. You know, there's celebrities who get popular and after just like a couple years, they feel like super entitled, right? Just a couple years, a couple years, they're in the spotlight. They, got, they get a lot of attention. Everyone loves them and all that kind of stuff. And then they begin to feel entitled in just a couple years. Imagine living for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years where you're just like the best of the best. And all of a sudden, Allah creates a new creation and now Iblis begins to think, what if he turns out to be better than me? And so now he's looking at, he's looking at Adam and some narration of the Prophet mentioned that he starts to go around Adam alayhi salam, like he goes around and around, he goes through him and he's constantly like observing him. And so Iblis actually becomes obsessed with Adam alayhi salam. He cannot deal with the fact that his title may be taken. And this festers for a while, these feelings of jealousy and envy. And actually uh, the proper way of uh, describing this is actually hasad. The concept of hasad in Islam is when you see something that someone else has and not only do you want it for yourself, you want that person to not have it. And that is what is truly dangerous and that is what Iblis was suffering from. You know the scholars, they discuss this issue. What was the first sin that Iblis uh, committed? They say, was it hasad or was it arrogance? A lot of scholars say arrogance. Some scholars say it was actually jealousy and envy or hasad. And I hold the opinion that it was actually hasad. That it all began with hasad. It began with that extreme jealousy where he couldn't stand that perhaps Adam السلام, may turn out to be a creation better than him. And this is how he's feeling now. And he hasn't said anything. No one's talked to him. He hasn't spoken out about this. It's just all happening in his heart. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blows life into Adam alayhi salam. And we know at that point Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders the angels and Iblis to make sajda to Adam alayhi salam. Right? This is by the way not a sajda of worship. This is a sajda of respect. This is a sajda of honor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We have indeed honored the children of Adam. The creation of Adam alayhi salam is honored. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam with his own hands as opposed to the jinn. There are many ways in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored Adam alayhi salam in his creation. Also, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the angels to make sajda means that Allah honored Adam alayhi salam even above the angels. And sometimes we don't realize this as mankind. When we debase ourselves, when we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we put ourselves in these types of situations, when we are, like I said, debasing ourselves, we don't realize that Allah has given us honor and we ourselves, we take away our honor subhanAllah. Right? But Allah honored the children of Adam alayhi salam. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the command. And we see this mentioned in many places in the Quran. For example, Surah Al-Kahf, verse 50, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَ تِسْجُدُوا لِآدَمْ And we said to the angels, make sajda to Adam. And Iblis is standing there, he's included within the angels. He's included within this command. Right? The command comes down, and I want you to actually imagine what this looks like. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Sad mentions, فَسَجَدَ الْمَلَائِكَةُ كُلُّهُمْ أَجْمَعُونَ Allah says that the angels, and Allah uses the letter fa here. Fa, by the way, in Arabic means immediately. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say thumma sajadu. He doesn't say wa sajadu. Not and then or after that or sometime. No. Fa means immediately. Immediately the, the angels, they go into sajda. Now, this gathering of angels is more amazing than we can even comprehend, but I'm gonna try and give you a visual. Imagine the angels standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The angels are absolutely beautiful beings, right? We know that they are more beautiful than we can imagine. We know that the angels are actually also very large beings, 
For example, the Prophet ﷺ, when he saw the angel Jibreel in his original form, in his true form, the Prophet ﷺ says, I looked up in the sky and the horizon was covered by just one of the wings of the angel Jibreel. There are narrations that mention, Prophet said that if you were to travel, if a person, a, a, a someone who's proficient at riding horses, if they were to travel the distance of a day and a night on, the, on horseback, they would not cover the distance of the wingspan of an angel. Can you imagine? This, this dude is just like riding and riding and riding for a full 24 hours. He's going and he cannot cover the, the, the distance of a wingspan from one tip to the other. He can't do it. Another narration mentions 10 days and 10 nights. Subhanallah. These huge, majestic, beautiful, awe-inspiring beings are standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're lined up. Perfect rows. There's not a single inch, not a single millimeter that one angel is in front of the other, right? In terms of the row. And it's not just five rows or 10 rows, or 20 rows, or 30 rows. It's as far as your eye can see, it's angels, right? You look out, and I don't know if you've ever been in a situation like that where you look out and like your eyesight just stops at a certain point. There's only as far as you can see and then it's just all blurry and gone after that. It would be like that, but in the distance it would just be angels. This type of gathering of angels. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the command to make sajda and the angels immediately fall into sajda. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الْمَلَائِكَةُ كُلُّهُمْ أَجْمَعُونَ Not only do they make sajda, they make sajda all together at the same time. In that beautiful scene, and in that harmony, everyone has fallen into sajda. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِلَّا Iblis," Except for Iblis. He's the only one left standing. Imagine how strange that would look. Everyone falls into sajda and there's one dude who is left standing. How odd would that look? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Istakbar. He became arrogant. Wakana min al kafirin. He became arrogant and he became amongst the disbelievers at that time. And now he is asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Qala ma man'aka. أَن تَسْجُدَ لِمَا خَلَقْتُ بِيَدَيْ Or in another verse, قَالَ مَا مَنْعَكَ أَلَّا تَسْجُدَ إِذْ أَمَرْتُكَ What has stopped you from making sajda when I've commanded you to do so? And we hear the excuse of Iblis. قَالَ أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْ He says, I am better than him. He said, you created me from fire and you created him from clay. So a couple things here. Number one, Iblis was the first person to use his own reasoning to reject a commandment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, Iblis was actually the first racist. He was the first, the shaitan was the first racist. He was the first person to look at his creation and look at his physical attributes and say, because of my, the way I was created, I am better than this person. He said, because I've been created from fire, I'm better than Adam Alayhi. So he's been created from clay. In actuality, we as Muslims, we know that the principle is, inna akramakum atqakum. That the most noble amongst you are who? The Arab, the Americans, Pakistanis, the Egyptians. Who's the most noble amongst mankind? Who? Who is it? What gives you nobility? Taqwa. Inna akramakum indallahi atqakum. The most noble amongst you are those who have the most taqwa. And you know what? That is fair. Because taqwa can be attained by anyone, regardless of the color of your skin. Regardless of your background, regardless of your gender, regardless of where you're from, regardless of your economic status, none of it matters because taqwa is an even playing field. And so Allah says, don't think anything but your taqwa, your piety, raises you up in, in status. Iblis didn't understand this. He was the first person to reject the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.